Breaking, Putin just copied Trump and deployed a fleet of warships, here's where they're headed. Since President Trump was elected as president the world leaders are doing their best to show their own strength off. We have seen this recently with Kim Jong-un in North Korea who is popping off missile tests like firecrackers. Now, it appears that Vladimir Putin is flexing his muscles by copying Trump's latest move in the Baltic Sea. There are new reports that three Russian warships that are equipped with long-range missiles have been spotted in the Baltic Sea. The Latvian army posted on its Twitter account that the Russian ships Ivan 551, Serpukov 603 and the Morshang Skate 124 were seen in the area this past Sunday. What is interesting about these ships being in this area is that they were not supposed to be there in the first place. In fact, these three ships were supposed to be making an appearance in St. Petersburg, Russia for Victory Day celebration. This celebration is held by the Russians to mark the end of World War II. So it seems odd that these ships would be making a U-turn out of the area and heading elsewhere. Currently, it is unclear where these ships are heading, but it is reasonable to suspect they are heading towards the USS Kearney. The reason why I say this is because last week, the USS Kearney entered this area conducting a patrol in support of U.S. national security interests in Europe. Now, that Russian warships are heading to the same area especially after being redirected from a national celebration is highly suspicious. According to Newsweek, Mikhail Nanashev, a representative for the Russian fleet supporters group confirmed to state news agency RIA Novosti that the parade was not cancelled, but said that some deployments were diverted and would not participate for organizational purposes he did not elaborate on. A Russian source speaking on the condition of anonymity also confirmed to the outlet that fewer ships would participate in the parade but denied the cut was related to USS Kearney. On Monday the U.S. Navy in Europe posted a picture on its official Twitter page of the U.S. vessel crossing eastward on patrol through Denmark Straits on May 5. The caption said it was conducting a patrol in support of U.S. national security interests in Europe. The Russian Navy did not comment on the approach towards Latvia's borders, however, the Baltic states repeatedly report approaches from Russian aircraft and vessels. The US and its European NATO allies are currently deploying four battalions to Poland and Baltic states through Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania to counter potential Russian incursions, following Russia's annexation of Crimea from Ukraine in 2014. Like I said before, it seems that Putin is flexing his muscles and is not afraid to provoke American forces. A few months ago, a Russian fighter thought it would be smart to buzz a U.S. warship in the Black Sea. The crew of the ship could have let it go but they decided to fire off warning shots to scare off the brazen intruder. Here is more from the Daily Mail. The incident came months after Moscow vowed to take retaliatory measures against the U.S. for what it views as an encroachment on its sphere of influence. Multiple Russian military aircraft came close to the USS Porter on February 10, incidents considered unsafe and unprofessional, a U.S. official said last month. But the Russian Defense Ministry said no such incidents had occurred. There were no incidents of any kind on February 10, related to flights by Russian military jets in the Black Sea near the U.S. Navy destroyer Porter, Russian news agencies cited a spokesman for the Russian Defense Ministry. Major General Igor Konashenkov, as saying. But Captain Danny Hernandez, a spokesman for U.S. European Command, cited three separate incidents involving Russian aircraft and the USS Porter. It would seem that after this incident you would think that Putin and his military would back off, but I guess not. My suggestion to Putin and his boys would be to stay where they are and leave Trump and our military alone. Hopefully, Putin will not provoke our military but if they there will be hell to pay. What do you think about this development? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Below, Trump shakes wounded Vitz hand who lost his limbs in war, then something incredible happened that will give you chills. As good conservatives, we all know that we're supposed to be grateful to our servicemen and women. Maybe you've shaken some hands and expressed your appreciation at a Veterans Day service, or donated to a project that is helpful for veterans. And I'm not saying that those things shouldn't be done, most assuredly they should. However, 
Many of us probably cringe and divert our eyes when we see what's going on in our veterans' hospitals across the country. We think that it's probably not related to their service when we see someone holding a cardboard sign saying that they're a veteran in need of help, because if we admit that fighting for our freedom put them there, then we have the responsibility to do something about it. Thankfully, President Trump isn't looking away, he's made a plan to deal with the issue of veterans' affairs head-on. And in his signature style, he's going to do it with speed and urgency. This isn't a moment too soon as the reports continue to stream in about the terrible treatment in veterans' hospitals, mostly due to red tape and understaffing and even corruption. In an effort to show his appreciation and support of our servicemen and women, President Trump recently met this serviceman who represents over a million wounded servicemen and women as the national commander of the DAV. Via Independent Journal Review In 1997, I contracted a rare bacterial infection during my service in the Coast Guard which resulted in the loss of my arms and legs as well as several of my internal organs. At the time, I felt my life was over and I couldn't imagine finding purpose again. I never could have dreamed that two decades later, the President of the United States would be shaking my hand, or hook, as it so happens, as I represented more than 1.3 million other seriously injured and ill veterans as the National Commander of DAV, Disabled American Veterans. I was proud to represent DAV as President Trump recently authorized the creation of the VA Office of Accountability and Whistleblower Protection. I was even more proud to have my wife, Yvonne, standing by my side. As a quadruple amputee, a lot of people ask about and thank me for my service. No one ever stops to thank my wife for the decades of service she's selflessly given as my caregiver. Without Yvonne's assistance, I'm not able to get out of bed on my own let alone travel to Washington, D.C., to shake hands with our Commander-in-Chief. Yvonne and the millions of spouses, parents and other family caregivers who serve by taking care of seriously disabled veterans are truly America's unsung heroes, deserving of recognition and support. Unfortunately, current policies restrict benefits through VA's program of comprehensive assistance for family caregivers only to veterans injured after September 11, 2001. There are currently three pieces of pending legislation that would, if enacted, expand those caregiver benefits to veterans of all eras. Bills like these have floated through many sessions of Congress without action, largely due to cost concerns. And it's true, providing comprehensive caregiver support to all veterans who need it would incur a cost, but far less than what it costs to provide nursing home or other institutional care. According to a VA report to Congress, the average cost per veteran per year in the comprehensive program is $36,770. To compare, VA annually spends $332,756 on average per veteran in a VA nursing home, $88,571 in a community nursing home and $45,085 in VA per diem payments in a state veteran's home. Allowing veterans the choice to remain at home you also enhances their quality of life, and it's been shown that family caregivers reduce overall health care costs by minimizing medical complications and lowering the number of hospital admissions. Clearly, expanding eligibility for these benefits to veterans of all eras isn't just the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do. When President Trump shook my hand, I hope it served as a reminder that we severely disabled veterans don't do this alone. There is almost always a dedicated caregiver at our side inspiring us, motivating us and helping us achieve the best life possible. It's time we think and honor them properly by giving them the support they deserve. I appreciate the effort that he's made to show that the numbers work out, in the taxpayer's favor to pass these pieces of legislation, but even if it were more expensive, don't we still owe it to our wounded warriors to do whatever is best for them? I hope your answer was a resounding yes. The last few presidential terms had eligible and even the normally apt military-age young adults running in the other direction with Obama at the helm. Thankfully, we now have a commander-in-chief for our military that those wearing the uniform can be confident in. He may well ask them to see some action, but it's good to know that he'll take good care of them when they get back home back home, breaking, 
nuclear emergency in Washington leads to frantic evacuations, here's who caused it. An urgent emergency has been declared in Benton County, Washington, after a tunnel collapsed at the Hanford Plutonium Uranium Extraction Plant in Washington State, where radioactive contaminants have now forced workers and residents to immediately evacuate the area. First responders are now actively at the scene, and that the U.S. Department of Energy is advising people in the area to immediately take cover, and refrain from eating or drinking until an adequate assessment of just how much radioactive contaminants have been leaked can be determined. Right now, authorities believe that a crew doing road work nearby was responsible, after they created enough vibration to cause the tunnel to completely collapse. The Hanford plant was established as part of the Manhattan Project several years back, and is now home of the first full-scale plutonium production reactor. The plant 